Do you know Photoshop? If so, you may know that not too long ago, it introduced these things called neural filters, which have the potential to be the best filters in all of Photoshop. Typical filters, think Unsharp Mask, work by comparing neighboring pixels to produce practical or special effects. There are exceptions, of course. Liquify comes to mind, but most of the others share one thing in common. They wouldn't know a photo if they saw one. Pixels, yes. Camera lenses, even. But the elements of a photographic image, no. Neural filters are different. They have churned through more photographic images than you and your friends have ever seen. Millions upon millions of images with the specific intent of deep learning and deep knowing what those images mean. They're still young. They're by no means perfect, but there's one neural filter that stands out from the pack and demands your immediate attention. Its name is Skin Smoothing, and it works pretty well no matter what you do. So why keep watching? Because skin is the biggest organ in the human body, and I'm going to use skin to set your second biggest organ, your brain, on fire. I'll start with a brief introduction to the general topic of neural filters here inside Photoshop. And so you want to open up a photographic portrait. That is an image that contains a recognizable face complete with skin details that you'd like to smooth over. Then go up to the filter menu and choose neural filters, which is followed by dot, 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 or an ellipsis if you prefer. Now, normally that tells Photoshop to open up a dialog box so that you and the program can have a kind of conversation. In this case, we get this is modal workspace complete with the dedicated toolbox over here on the left hand side and this single neural filters panel which contains the neural filters themselves which you can mix and match if you like we've got the featured filters which are the ready for prime time players we have the beta filters that are in development if you see a little cloud that just means you want to click on it to download that filter before you can use it we also have this curious item waitlist which contains ideas for filters. They're not really filters yet, anyway, but they may be in the future. For example, would you like to create some artificial photograph quality faces for your fake Instagram account? In which case, click I'm evil or what have you. However, if you want to get work done, you need to switch to all filters. You also want to make sure that you have a selected face. It's dimmed in our case. That's okay. That just means we haven't selected a filter yet, but you can see a face. And also, if you click on the fit to screen button right here, you'll see a rectangle around the face. That rectangle is not really there. It's just identifying the face so that Photoshop knows what to work on. All right, so I'm going to click on 100% in order to zoom in on the image, and I'll scroll to about this location right here. Now let's take a first look at the actual topic of this movie, which is the skin smoothing filter. And so notice here inside the neural filters workspace, it's in position number two. It used to be first. It's moved down the list. By the time you watch this movie, it could be in position number three, but you'll find it. Go ahead and turn it on, at which point you'll be served up two seemingly simple slider bars, blur and smoothness. Well, here's some background. Blur affects the high frequency details. So areas where luminance levels transition very quickly. So for example, these fine wrinkles right here, they go dark light, dark light, dark light, very fast. Same with all the other skin textures. Whereas as smoothness affects the low frequency details. So that would be, for example, the nose, which is a little bit out of focus, but notice that it goes from highlight to midtone to shadow very slowly indeed, which is why smoothness, which is what we're going to start with here, is very subtle. I want you to watch these bendy dots, especially the red ones up here near the top of the image. I'll go ahead and crank the softness value up to its maximum, which is plus 50, at which point you will see more tr more d definite transitions around those bindi dots. And also the reds changed a little bit. Did you notice that? Well, you will as soon as I crank the smoothness value down to its minimum value. Keep an eye on these dots once again. And notice that they grow a little more saturated actually, but they also grow less distinct. So we have softer transitions around the edge. And that's 
how that works, which is to say it doesn't really do all that much, whereas blur does a lot. So if you really want to calm down the skin texture, then you're going to want to crank up the blur value to its maximum of 100, at which point we'll get a kind of soft glow on the image. Can you see that? It's a, it's a kind of filmy glow. Whereas if I take the blur value down to zero, we are going to get rid of some of that glow and we're going to bring back those firm creases, those very clearly defined creases in the wrinkles. And so that's pretty subtle as well, by the way. But overall, this filter is anything but subtle. Let me show you what I'm talking about. I'm going to crank the smoothness value. It's not really cranking. I'm just going to take it up to zero so that both the blur and smoothness values are zero, at which point you may figure that's going to make zero difference, but it doesn't. This is a very smart filter. Watch this. See this icon right there? Show original. It turns off the preview. So it's like a preview checkbox or something. But notice when I turn it off that we have all kinds of modeling in a skin and we have these indentations as well. Some very clearly defined wrinkles, not, not only going horizontally across the underside of the eye, but vertically as well. Whereas if I turn the preview back on, go ahead and watch those details. Notice how they smooth out automatically. So just by virtue of turning this filter on, you're gonna do a lot of smoothing. I also want you to notice what doesn't get affected. The eyelashes did not get smoothed over at all. And so notice, here's a before and an after. Here's the way, this is how they looked in the first place. So just the same, and here's how they look after we apply skin smoothing. They don't get affected at all. And that's because, are you ready for this? These are high contrast, high frequency details. And so they do not get affected. Whereas lower contrast, so basically low to medium contrast, high frequency details get affected the most, once again, by this very smart filter. Now we'll take a look at an option called New Layer Masked. And while it's not necessarily an option I recommend that you ever use, it is very useful for understanding how skin smoothing works. All right, so back inside the Neural Filters workspace, notice these output options right here. By default, Photoshop selects New Layer. And that's because it's going to retain the original layer, maintain it, that is, and it's going to create, it's going to send your changes to a new layer. And so while that's theoretically non-destructive, it is indeed non-destructive, but the problem is notice that this is a JPEG image, which means it's a flat file. That's the way it started life. And so I would have to turn around and save my changes as a native PSD document. What if you don't want to do that? What if you want to toss caution to the wind and you just want to apply your skin tone and you don't care about the original image, in other words, then just go ahead and choose current layer and then you'll apply your changes to the actual image, to the flat image, and you can then just save your changes to the JPEG file by pressing Control or Command S. Then, next, notice that we have new layer mask. That's what we're going to be talking about in just a moment. We have smart filter, which we'll visit shortly. That applies your changes to a non-destructive smart filter. And then we have new document, which we're not going to do, but I mean, you get, it's obvious. You would just save your changes to a separate document. All right, we're going to go with new layer mask. And at which point I'll just go ahead and click OK. And what that's going to do is it's going to create a new layer and give it a layer mask automatically. And so I'll go ahead and click OK. And a moment later, it really doesn't take very long at all. We have a new layer, as you can see right here, and we have a layer mask. Now, you may know that you can view the layer mask independently of the image all by itself by pressing the Alt key or the Option key on the Mac and clicking on that thumbnail, that layer mask thumbnail here inside the layers panel. At which point, I'll just review how layer masks work. Anywhere where you're seeing black, we are hiding the contents of this layer. So we are basically turning them into holes. Whereas anything that's white is revealing the contents of the layer. And so notice that the eyes have been blacked out. 
So we're not seeing any changes to the eyes. Turns out there aren't any changes. We're not seeing any changes made to the mouth. And if I zoom out here, you can see that we've masked away any potential changes around the face. Whereas everything, in, a lot of the stuff inside the face is being revealed. And so all of this stuff is ostensibly skin tones that have been smoothed over. But this is even more important here. Notice that every pixel is either black or white inside this layer mask. There are no transitional gray pixels at all. And that's because all this mask is showing us is what got changed and what didn't get changed. So the skin got changed, the eyes didn't, for example. All right, so I'm gonna switch back to the image by clicking on the image thumbnail right there. And I'll zoom out, actually I'll zoom out to 50% so that we can take in a fair amount of the image at a time, the, the entire face. And now another thing you could do, another keyboard trick is to press the shift key and click on the layer mask thumbnail and that'll turn that layer mask off. And so notice if I shift click to turn it off, see how it's got a big X to it? That didn't make any difference at all. Now I'll shift click again to turn it back on. You're not seeing a single pixel change. That's not your imagination. That's because that's the way it is. Whereas if I turn the layer off, the actual layer, then we'll see some big changes. That's the original image with those indentations, for example, all over the place. Whereas if I turn the layer back on, this is the skin smoothing. So all that layer mask is doing is showing you what got changed and what didn't get changed inside your image. All right, now I just want to, just to make sure that everything's crystal clear, I want to revisit the difference between the smoothness value, which is the second value, recall that, that affects the low frequency details versus the blur value, which is the first value, and it affects the high frequency details. And so what I've done is I've created a lower resolution version of the image. It's about half res. And I've created a map, not a mask, but a map of the areas that are getting changed. So this is what's happening when you vary the smoothness value, which affects the low frequency stuff once again. When you vary it from negative 50, which is the minimum, to positive 50, which is the maximum. So anything that's bright is getting affected. Now this is very subtle. I've exaggerated this map just so we can see what's going on. But so what's really happening is the bindi dot was affected. All the stuff near the top of the image, this chain over here on the right hand side. And to a certain extent, those wrinkles under the left eye. Anything that's dark is not getting affected at all. And notice there's sort of blobby areas that are being affected by smoothness. Compare that to the first value, blur, which affects the high frequency data. It varies from zero to 100. And it's a much more sharply defined map this time around. Anything that's bright, such as these chains up top, this chain over here on the right hand side, to a certain extent the bindi dots are getting affected. Definitely those fine wrinkles, so anything that's bright is getting affected once again, as well as these indents. So in other words, varying the blur value between zero versus 100 makes a big difference in those light regions. It makes a very small difference in the dark regions. And then anything that's black is not getting affected at all. And just so you can put this all together, this is the original version of the image, albeit it's a low res version. I want you to focus this time, because we focused on all the wrinkles and stuff like that, I want you to see the chain. And so notice the after version of the image contains a sort of glowing chain. So it, even things that aren't really skin details will end up getting affected. And so there you have it. Neural filters, skin smoothing, Photoshop. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to like and subscribe. Now that you've seen my favorite neural filter, comment yours down below. And if you're interested in more, believe me you are, check out patreon.com slash deeknow as well as my very own Deke.com. I'm Deke McClellan. This is Photoshop Now.